You're about to listen to the Weekly Business Hour podcast. I am Rick Schisler, Silver Fox Advisor, your host for the show. The show is broadcast live each Monday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on IRLoneStar.com. You can reach me on my Facebook page, The Weekly Business Hour, or by email at rick at IRLoneStar.com. The Weekly Business Hour is sponsored by Patricia Cooper Insurance Agency, Taylorized PR, Schooley Mitchell with Jerry Polio, and the Silver Fox Advisors. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the program. Good morning, and welcome to the Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Your host, Rick Schisler, is a Silver Fox advisor who personally has over 40 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. So sit back, pull out your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we join Rick Schisler in his Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor. And if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business, then you're in the right place. Because the Weekly Business Hour is where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. And boy, I'm glad to be back with you. The last couple of weeks, I apologize. Uh, we have not been live. Uh, technical difficulty, and then uh, one of our guests had a difficulty. So it feels great to be back in this chair this week, especially this week as we approach Thanksgiving. It's a holiday week, and attitudes are a little more positive as we go around out there. So it's fun to be here in the studio, as well as wandering around downtown Conroe and talking to people. And it's a great week to do business. I know it's a short business week, but it's still a great week to do business. Hard to find some people, obviously, because people do take a week-long vacation. But get out there and look for business. There's still business going on. If you're ready to do business this week, then let's get started with today's show. First, let's check in with Dick here at Lone Star and see what's on tap for Lone Star this coming week. Dick? I want to let your listeners know that coming up on December 8th will be the second annual Cadence Hope Telethon here at Lone Star Night Radio. Uh, Wayne Michaels and Lone Star Country Nights has a telethon for a nonprofit called Cadence Hope. And starting around 7 p.m. for Lone Star Country Nights, he's going to have live music all the way through the telethon. And you can call in with your pledges. He'll help feature live music from Michael Player, Maddie Dean, Ken and Danielle, uh, and many other local bands here in downtown Conroe. Well, I would encourage you, as I always do when we have events like this, uh, this is a wonderful charity. As most of you who are at least regular listeners know, I'm involved in the community and encourage all business people to get involved in our community. But Cadence Hope is one of those special charities that does things other people don't do. It helps families who've had a premature birth and are taken away from home. They have to take the baby to a faraway place, might be 50, 100 miles, might even be further, so that it can grow and survive and get healthy. And when they're away, expenses mount up and sometimes you just need somebody to reach in with a hotel room for a couple weeks maybe some food money and cadence hope does that so it's doing little things that make a big difference so listen in on the telethon well we're going to go through a little business news before we get to the in-studio guest and i want to move through this uh somewhat quickly because i'm excited about the person that we have for you in the studio today First thing on the business news, and this was something I picked up a couple weeks ago, but I didn't want to put it aside, uh, it's property taxes. We're all subject to property taxes, both on our residential uh, property as well as our business property. And a statement was released that all the statements are in the mail, and I'm sure by now that you've received those statements. Uh, It's interesting. Montgomery County mails out over 291,000 tax statements for property taxes uh, they did in 2015. And what's interesting and uh, a special benefit to us on our residential property, according to Montgomery County Tax Assessor Collector Tammy McRae, is the statements reflect a $10,000 increase in the homestead exemption for school taxes as provided in Texas Senate Bill 1. Uh, the homestead proposition still must be approved by voters, which it was uh, in the election on November 3rd. So some more benefits for all of us and hopefully a reduction in your taxes. What I really want to touch on, though, on the personal business property taxes, don't forget, each year by April, April of each year, you have to repeat this every year, you have to render your business property. There are a lot of folks that forget to do this. There are penalties involved. 
But it's interesting uh, that our business, personal property, people don't think about it, particularly small business people. I found my clients oftentimes forget that they need to render that to the tax assessor. You are taxed on it. And one thing you can do, and it's something that people think more, I think, in a residential uh, manner, uh, is that you can protest. If you feel that they've valued your business property too high, then you can protest this. I'm not going to get into the details today, but there's experts out there to help you. But you have to manage your business taxes, particularly your personal business property taxes, just like any other expense of your business. So don't don't let it get by you. Uh, keep an eye on those taxes. Look at your statements. Pay attention to them. Just don't write that check and let it go. And don't forget April. April of each year, you need to render that property. Another thing I had had on my agenda back when, and I, I don't want to let it go, and that's the fact that we had a Shakespeare festival here in downtown Conroe a couple, three weeks ago. Back Saturday, November 7th, it was sort of a bad weather day, but a lot of people turned out. And I want to tip my hat to the folks that put this on. This is an event that brings business into downtown Conroe, uh, and it's important for all the business people who live here, plus the people in the community that have a chance to come out and participate. Uh, because, let's face it, these kinds of things support business, uh, whether it's in downtown Conroe or throughout Montgomery County. You've got to have things going on that interest people so they'll live in your community. The folks, uh, and one special thing I want to know is that William Shakespeare himself was played by Conroe artists and the afternoon drive time GJ right here on Lone Star. The reluctant cowboy himself, Rick Sellers. So if you missed this event, you missed a chance to meet William Shakespeare in person. So I would encourage you as you see these events, come on out, uh, support them, come to downtown Conroe, support the merchants here as we encourage you to do throughout the area. Let's get back to property taxes one more time. There's something going on at a higher level that I wanted to make sure all our listeners were aware of, and that's at the state level. You know, property tax reform has been out there for years. Uh, and the state has struggled with it, particularly as it relates to funding our schools. And there have been court cases. Uh, most of you are probably aware of this. And you probably, like me, you wonder where it all is. Well, it's still out there. They're still trying to reform it. doesn't seem like an issue that we can all get on the same page and find a way to do this in a manner that's acceptable to all parties. But the good news is our own state senator, Brandon Creighton, a uh, Republican from Conroe here, who represents us through Senate District 4, is on a special committee that's been formed in the legislature by Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. And this is good for us here in the Montgomery County area because we're going to have our own representation on the committee that's going to take another crack at trying to come up with some legislation. So it's important that you contact Senator Creighton if you have a perspective, if you have an idea, uh, or you have a position, you can contact him directly because this committee, which is made up of Senators Paul Bentoncourt, uh, Senator Creighton, Senator Kelly Hancock, Eddie Lucio, Charles Perry, Van Taylor, and Carlos Uresti will be meeting shortly. They're going to have public hearings across the state and look one more time for ways to improve the property tax process as well as reduce the burden on property owners. Now that'll be interesting because those are at opposite ends of the scale. But the key thing is they're going to report back to the 2017 85th legislature. So it's important, again, if you have a position, you get an opportunity to speak up because we've got one of our own on the committee that's going to be working on this issue. So I think it's important that we take a good look at it. Well, that's the news, the business news we have around town. Now we get to the fun part of the show. We talk to our studio guest, and I am so pleased to re- uh, to recognize and welcome Bobby Cobb, the owner of Massage Heights in the Woodlands, and recently a second location on Rayford Road. Uh, Bobby opened her first location just three years ago, and she's already expanding to a second location, which is a business mentor and advisor. I think just an exciting thing to happen in the life of a business. She says the secret to her success is her passion and honesty, and she will share us with us today how she used those two characteristics to build her business. Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you so very much. Thanks for having me on. Well, this is an exciting thing for me because I, again, think when a business reaches a point and moves to on to that second location, that's a huge event in the life of most businesses. But before we get into that and talk about it, would you share with us a little bit of your business background and how you got to where you are today? Sure. Uh, so my 
be- my business background, just as a junior adult, I would say, was in banking. And I was in banking for a little over 20 years, moved my way up from administrative assistant on all, all the way up to bank management and lending, did consumer and mortgage lending. And um, then from there, I actually migrated over to oil and gas and did that for about five years. Lived in Fort Worth for a while and back in Houston. And so, and I'm new to Houston. I've been here since, I guess, 2005. So pretty new. Um, call it my home now, but uh, now I'm now I'm doing what I love. I've always been the type of person that have admired people and kind of been jealous of people that have been excited about going to work every single day. And now I finally have that, and I'm so proud of it. And I'm, I couldn't be doing anything anything more than what I'm doing right now with with more joy. So, well, and you know that's there's there's a lot written, a lot discussed about having passion uh, for your business or for your job is is, is a fact. Uh, but I have to ask you this question. You moved to Houston. You've kind of lived around the state. What brought you to Woodlands to Montgomery County? It was actually a job transfer uh, of my of my ex-husband's. And uh, he was in the finance world, and we moved here. And um, so, and then I stayed. We, we got divorced in 2006, and I it just is my home. It, I grew up in Iowa, and uh, it's hard to find another place that feels like home, but I just loved it so much I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. Yeah, it really is a great place yes. to do business as well. There's no doubt about it. Well, let me ask you something. You you got into the massage business. What what took you into that business? Well, so as you know, oil and gas is very up and down. And during uh, the recession of 2008, I w- went back to banking. And in the interim, to try to sustain some of my income loss, I actually started working for one of our competitors, part-time doing business development and, you know, front desk type, sales type position. And uh, I've been getting massages for about 20 years. And so really had the opportunity to get more and more massages and started feeling better and better and better. And then became even more of a junkie at that point than I was prior to that. So I knew when, and then once the oil and gas industry came back into uh, fruition, then I went back there and then it kind of fell again and, and thought to myself, I need to do something where there is, where I have passion and where I can give to people something that I enjoy and decided to go into the massage industry. You know, that's interesting. You say you've been a user for 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. So obviously you gained some insight into the business. Absolutely. I mean, being a business person and then getting a massage, a lot of people think that, well, I'm in business. I don't pay attention to what I'm doing personally, but we know different, right? You were paying attention to an industry and made that decision, I guess, based on that experience. Yes, absolutely. I just fell in love with the giving kind of people that massage therapists are. They have huge hearts, a passion for their field, and really, really are. They don't make a lot of money. They do it because they love what they do. So in our industry, you do it because of love. And the love of people and the love of giving to other people. You know, that's an interesting philosophy because uh, you're in an industry like many, there seems to be a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. But I've never heard it put like that, that you, you're you there because you're passionate, you love to do it. And I'm speaking of, why, I guess, why the really good massage therapists do it, because they really want to do it. They really do, and I'm really picky about who I hire. I've learned through, you know, I guess my my, mis- my own mistakes when opening my first business and just hiring those people that had that skill set. I could interview someone and get a and, and get a massage from them, and if they were an excellent massage therapist, regardless of whether they had passion, I would hire them because I needed people. I stopped doing that because those people don't succeed. You know, they feel that the, the clients that come in feel that lack of energy and feel that lack of compassion and care, and so. I ask a very important question when I'm interviewing people, and they have to pass this question. And it's, why did you know? Why did you get into massage therapy? And tell me a healing success story, and that that motivates you every single day. And so they've got it. They've got to really impress me, almost bring me to tears with that answer before I'll hire them. You know, that's an interesting uh, approach to interviewing. What an important part of business that is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here on our first break. I uh, hope you'll stay with us, and remember. Like us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash the weekly business hour. We'll be right back and visit with Bobby about how she used that passion and honesty to build a business. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. 
Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. I'm Lieutenant Bob Berry with the Conroe Police Department, reminding you that drinking and driving do not mix. Drinking and driving causes an alcohol-related fatality every hour in the United States. Stay sober and stay alive. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. Welcome, this is Rick Schisler, Silver Fox Advisor, and you are listening to the Weekly Business Hour. And this week, our guest in the studio is Bobby Cobb, the owner of Massage Heights. Well, Bobby, we were appreciative of you giving us a little bit of background. Now, let's talk about those things, because it intrigued me of how you built your business on a foundation of passion and honesty. If you would, share with us how you use those two characteristics to build your business. Well, passion, uh, I have a strong passion for people. Uh, in general, and I, it's kind of a blessing and a curse to where I truly love everyone. Uh, I, I have people coming into my business, and I, I struggled with growth for a really long time um, with not necessarily retention, but with, with the growth side, meaning um, people would come in and take advantage of that niceness. And so they would, they would call in all the time, or they would try to take off all the time, or they would maybe come in two hours late for their shift. And so I'm all about forgiveness, and so I've had to learn to tighten my ship a little bit. So um, and, and learn to be passionate about uh, about the right the right people. And like I talked about, the interview process being super important. So there's been a lot of hardships because I'm so passionate and I embrace people like family. And and because of I guess learning that and learning the people that you can trust and cannot trust, and holding on to just the ones that are that that are um, good about giving that passion back has brought us into this huge family unity between now the two locations, and um, it's helped with. Not only retention, but in, in just the attitudes and coming in the door. You know, the clients coming in talk about how they feel the great energy when they walk in and how they can tell that my staff really loves their environment and loves what they're doing and loves working for me. And it shows in our reviews and, and just the brightness in their, in their smiles and their, and their gratefulness when you see them every day. You know, I would think that if I work for you, I would have to be passionate enough at least to show up on time because <laughs> I have personal appointments and right. I'm a customer now and I walk in. It's not like you're making a product and shipping it out where you've got a little slack. You don't have any slack. You don't. And it's super embarrassing, you know, because there there are different types of people in this world and different generations. And it's learning to really find those perfect people that fit into your, your family unit. And for those who don't appreciate the the what we're trying to accomplish and how much we're trying to give to the community and don't respect other others time it it was really hard to go through those learning curves and really defining to find the right people that are going to um, care as much about the clients as we do well you've mentioned people now that is the biggest challenge which i can understand mm-hmm. you're in a personal service business what are some of the other tough challenges you've had in building your business Really awareness. I mean, the Woodlands is a beautiful community, a beautiful wooded community. And so my first business that, you know, we have no signage except just our, our general sign on the building. Uh, the building's been there since the late 70s, early 80s, I believe. And so 
a hidden business, trying to build awareness, like print ads don't typically work for us. Just it's taken time and reputation building to get the growth factor that we've needed to to sustain and continue to build on. So going into our third year, we're finally hitting those mile markers and we're finally able to keep our therapists busy and, and happy and making the, uh, you know, making the money that they'd like to, that they'd like to make. And so there's been some hardships along the way. And, you know, we rely so much on Google and word of mouth and our Google presence was not there really consistently for the first 18 months of our opening our business. So that was a big struggle as well. Now, how do you do your social media now? I'm just curious. That's a question I ask all the time. Do you do it yourself or do you have someone do it? I do. Uh, corporate does some as well, but I really learned that if I'm monitoring it myself, I can put some more personalization on it to where I can put staff pictures on there. Our wonderful sign spinner who's super talented, kind of different things that we're doing throughout the day, pictures of our new members, um, some celebrity members, and it really gets the community excited and, and they feel more, um, I guess, more uh, the personalization has attracted more of an audience. That's interesting. You mentioned corporate. You're part of a franchise network, correct? Correct. And you have in the studio with you today, right? Yes. You want to introduce Travis to us and bring him into the conversation? Uh, This is Travis Doyle. He's been with Massage Heights. He started um, as the lifestyle consultant at the Kingwood location back, what, six years ago? Six years. So he's a great inspiration, and now he's our franchise business consultant for the Houston region. And start, you know, started learning, I guess, the, the passionate trades of Massage Heights long before my time. And he's, he's helped me immensely along the way. He's come in and did a, lot of, did a lot of training for my massage therapist, helped coach me in the things I was doing wrong, helped me improve in the things that I was doing right. And so, you know, I attribute some of my success to Travis as well. Well, Travis, uh, that's one of the things that I've heard because I've had on this show over the past three years we've been doing it. Uh, several different franchises of different mm-hmm. areas, different industries. And the reason people give that they go with the franchise is because of people like you that can come in and help them. Uh, a lot of these folks are corporate refugees, mm-hmm. which, right, Bobby, you sort of fit into that broad category. Absolutely. You were in corporate and then you moved. So what's the secret to your success in getting a franchise off the ground and running? Well, I think that a lot of it is getting into the right system. Right. And Massage Heights is it's an amazing system and it's it's a family business from the top down. I mean, even at the base level of Massage Heights, the franchisor is one family and feeding that down into the businesses as a whole is extremely important. Um, having those kind of core values that go along with what they do and what we offer. So I think that I think it's just getting into the right franchise and having that support is extremely important so that. Obviously, a lot of times when you buy into a franchise, you're getting into a brand new industry, and so it's going to be very different from what you're doing, like you said, those corporate refugees. So, You know, it's interesting, and one of the things, uh, Bobby, that I saw and we talked about for a couple of minutes before the show was that you have a, or I guess Massage Heights does, a core corporate philosophy. You have five words that you try to, to follow, diligence, loyalty, passion, authenticity, and intent. How do you get employees to buy into that? Neither one of you can answer this. I mean, how do you get people that you hire as employees to buy into this? Personally, uh, getting into the trenches yourselves and earning that respect. Um, all five of those can be, I guess, I guess, shown through, I mean, honestly, I do laundry. I clean toilets. I scrub floors. I help them change their rooms out. So, I'm not above any of it. Doesn't matter if I'm the owner or if I'm, you know, entry level. I, I'm all about being part of that team and just giving to my team what I want them to give to me. What do you say, Travis? Is there anything that you've picked up because you work with multiple uh, franchise owners? I think that it's just like Bobby said. It's de- if if you buy into it and you're in it and that's your core values and the culture that you want to bring, and then it's going to feed into your staff. If it's not, and those aren't the areas that you want to focus into, then it's not, you know, it's, it's having that mindset of I'm not above anybody here and we're all equal. And in order for me to succeed or the franchisee to succeed or anybody to succeed, then the staff has to succeed. And we have to pour into that staff as a whole in order for them to succeed. Because honestly, that's the most important thing at the end of the day is, is how many people are you able to develop and how many people are you able to bring up to life and help kind of build their own business as a whole? You know, that would seem to me, what, uh, to pick up on what you just said, to be a limitation of growth. If I can't find the right people and develop them, then that limits my growth. 
Absolutely. And my team really knows they're loved by me. I mean, I hug them. I cry with them. I embrace them. I know family comes first. Um, I, as soon as I, I'm a hugger. So, you know, when I, when I interview people, you know, I shake their hand initially. When I bring them on my team, I hug them and tell them welcome, you know, and, and that relationship starts there and continues to grow from there. Well, let me ask you this. Just uh, This is a question I've often thought about, but I've never asked. How, on an average day, how much time do you spend behind a desk? More than I would like. Uh, now that I have really two great uh, retreat directors at both of my locations, I'm going to be blessed with spending less time behind the desk because I was kind of everything for a long period of time, where it would be operations, hiring, helping with the training. And so I've, and I've got also a really great lead therapist that has been there with me from the beginning. And so having those great rowers on my team, now I can kind of go out and be around the people, which is what I really enjoy. So my door is always open and they've known that, but now it's wide open um, and I'm, I'm a lot less stressed and I sleep a lot better. So you understand, I asked that question because you said you clean toilets, which I'm a believer in that philosophy, the toilet cleaning. That's kind of a, an old <laughs> philosophy, some wonderful stories in my career over that. But the idea is that you're out amongst people. You're always moving. Uh, and when you get stuck, uh, that term, stuck behind a desk, uh, that's what it really is. Yes. Really can inhibit a business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break now. Uh, if you'll stay with us. And when we come back, I've asked, if, Bobby, do you mind sticking around a little bit? No, not at all. And, and in the next segment, I want to talk about that second location. Huge okay. leap of faith there. And I want to hear how you did it and how you're making it work for you thus far. Sounds so great. please stay with us. And don't forget... If you did miss the first part of the show, all shows are archived, so you can listen to them on the podcast at IR Lone Star. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at tailorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Heaven's Army of Resources and Recreation Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization featuring a 10,000 square foot building located at 19325 FM 1485 West, New Caney, Texas. At Heaven's Army, we offer over 26 different services free for all ages, from karate, dance, drug and alcohol classes, anger management, parenting, food and clothing pantries, to just name a few. We are supported solely by volunteers and private donations. Our main mission is to glorify God in all that we do. At Heaven's Army, we strive to be a hand up, not a hand out. Come check us out at 19325 FM 1485 West, New Caney, Texas, or call for more information at 281-689-5864. You may also learn more about Heaven's Army by visiting our website, at heavensarmyofresources.com. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. 
you are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, Silver Fox Advisor, and we've been talking with Bobby Cobb and also Travis from the corporate office about Massage Heights, a business that Bobby's been in for three years. I asked Bobby to stick around and Travis uh, into the third segment because I wanted to talk about the second location. As I said at the beginning of the show, I feel that opening a second location is a real milestone for any business. Uh, and it's a difficult one for many people to take on that additional responsibility. And frankly, I don't think it's for everybody. Everybody's not geared to open and maintain and manage successfully a remote location. Of course, then you can move to the third and fourth, but that second one, there's something about it. Right, Bobby? Absolutely. If you'd have asked me a year and a half ago if I was going to open up another location, I would have said there's no way. Not because I didn't love what I did, but because I was just struggling so much to get where I needed to be. And so with with the extra help, I, I'm finally over that huge hump, and I feel like – I finally feel like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's been a major learning curve. Well, let me ask you, what, what motivated you? I mean, why a second location? Well, honestly, location. Uh, so I live over on the east side of the tracks uh, in the woodlands, so I live in Imperial Oak Subdivision, have a lot in Bender's Landing that we're building in next year. So – it's, it's home for me back there on that side of the tracks. And so I know a lot of people. I know a lot of the business owners. And so and there's so much growth over there. It's one of the largest growing areas in the whole Houston region. Grand Parkway is uh, being built out over there. So massive, massive, massive growth. There's a strong need. There's only one other massage uh, location, massage competitor back there. And so there's a ton of residential um, demand for it. And thought, let's bring Massage Heights family over on that side of the tracks. So this is purely a business decision. The opportunity is there, and you're going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Well, that's great. That's the right motivation to do it. Now, second location. I mean, you just opened on November 11th, right? Right. And where are you located? We are on the corner of Riley Fuzzle and Rayford um, in spring. So the HEB shopping center that was just built there and opened in July, that's that's where our new baby is. So you're in the shopping center itself. Yes. What was the biggest challenge in opening that second location? Honestly, I, I can honestly say there were not a lot of challenges. I, I think coming from so much of the learning curve prior to, I knew how early to hire people. Location was amazing. I mean, people were posting about it, getting excited. I had a very easy time finding therapists because of location and, and I guess the history that, that and the, I guess the credibility that I've built. Biggest challenge was just getting open soon enough. My husband's company actually built it out within six weeks, and it was just, we made it kind of look easy. It's been great. Well, let me ask you, you know, one of the things that people in business aren't used to dealing with is the real estate part of the equation. In other words, to go get the lease or to build the location. You made a comment that your husband apparently is in the building business, so he could do your build out. That's one piece. But getting the location, securing the lease, where did you get the expertise to help you with that? Well, Massage Heights Houston region has a realtor. His name is Brian Ellisor, and he's been helping Massage Heights develop locations for many, many, many years. And I got the call from our area developer, JD, and said, we have this LOI at the HEB location. It's in your neighborhood. It's in your marketable area. Are you interested? And I jumped on it. So that it was already done for me before I even <laughs> signed the lease. So that's another advantage of the franchise organization. Absolutely. Wow, that's a neat story. Well, let me ask you, okay, now you're open. Uh, roughly, what, 10 days, yes. 11 days. What do you see as a major challenge of managing a second location? Because you can't be in two places at one time. I'm super lucky right now. I really do have great managers, great leaders in place. Uh, my only challenge is the traffic back there and the Grand Parkway build out. But once that opens up, I, I just see nothing but great things for my team over there. So the idea is you're going to rely upon these managers and then you'll shuttle back and forth? Yes. Or what kind of accountability do you have built in, I mean, to make sure that they're doing their job at least to the level that you would expect? Daily communications, uh, weekly meetings, uh, monthly staff meetings between the whole staff, and then quarterly, like, dual team meetings. We had a um, – and then we had a meet-your-team meeting right before we opened so everybody could meet everybody and, and build that camaraderie. But, yeah, we just – just constant communication with my, my leaders – well, let's go back now, because the important thing is in that second location that you do find somebody to help you manage the location. What was the secret to finding that person to say, okay, I'm comfortable to sort of bet part of my my asset, if you will, my business on this person? 
Did you go through an interview process or is just somebody you worked with for so long that you felt comfortable? How did you build to that management position? Well, for the second location, I have a really good friend that actually referred her to me. Uh, She had four years experience in our industry and was interested in coming to work for me. And it was a very easy process for me because I interviewed her, loved what she had to say. She she has a a really big heart, really great business sense and the love of the industry. And so that hire was actually a pretty simple one. And then for my other location, they were actually hired around the same time. She had just sold an IT company, strong business background, strong uh, just people skills, and, and just the love of people in the industry as well. So I, I call them the Kims, um, that they're the dynamic team. And then, you know, having Sharla as a lead therapist for both locations with all the experience she's had. She's got about 10 years experience. She's also dual licensed with facials. And so um, I'm just super, super blessed to have them. Any special training or whatnot for the managers? Yeah, we have a Massage Heights uh, corporate training. Uh, it's through, uh, they're now developing what's called e-learning, but um the, the online learning process. We have training books. We have hands-on training. You know, there's Millennium Training, which is our software. So that's just a vast step-by-step-by-step training process. And they all, a little bit of it's kind of fast-paced because we did everything so fast. They kind of had their, as, as one of my Kims say, you know, put your floaties on and swim. A little bit of that, too. <laughs> I like that expression. That's yeah, a good one. But Travis did come in and do some training for us as well for three days. So that was a huge help. Now, Travis, is that part of the franchise uh, operation to provide that kind of training? It is. It is. We come in and we provide training to the locations that would like our training um, and the corporate training. Because some locations, especially with multi-unit operators, they'll, you know, they've already got it and they, they have their systems in place and they've already, they have people to do that already. But new locations, we go in and we do a retreat director training and then help them train their staff. Um, and that's part of it. And we also do regional trainings for the managers as well uh, quarterly. Well, Bobby, this would happen to be kind of wind up on this segment, and I appreciate both of you staying around a little extra time. But having that support mechanism, in this case a franchise, uh, just has to be critical to help you open that next location. It's super critical, and we have we have really great communication with corporate as well. We actually have a, a Yammer site where the owners and the retreat directors, well, actually just now the owners now, but they can get on and – we're having this problem. Do you have this problem? Or how do I access this? Or it's it's in, it's instant response. And so we have instant communication and instant support from our so, corporate and our and our Massage Heights team, franchisees. Right. Support of that network. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, if people want to find you, tell us, where can they find you? Both locations. Okay, so the Panther Creek location is 4775 West Panther Creek Drive, Suite 220B. And it's in the woodlands at the Panther Creek Village Square across from Starbucks. And then the the spring location is 3550 uh, Rayford Road, Suite 180, corner of Riley Fuzzle and Rayford, um, just past the Grand Parkway, across from the new Sonic, and uh, in, the, in the HEB Shopping Center. And give us a phone number if I get lost. Okay. Panther Creek is 832-900-7788, and Spring Creek is 832-900-7222. We also can do online bookings as well through www.massageheights.com. And that's important today because I see that more and more with people booking appointments, even medical appointments. Well, thank you so much, Bobby Cobb, for being here today. And Travis, thank you for joining us and providing the perspective of the franchise horror. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to take a short break now. And when we come back, we'll get into some business tips uh, that we hope you can use in your business. So please stay with us. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. At Jazzy Junk, 
volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on League Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org. That's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor, welcoming you back to the Weekly Business Hour. Uh, we just had a great interview, I think, with Bobby Cox of Massage Heights about starting a new business, just less than three years old, and already opening a second location. I want to take a, a, a few minutes, though, and give you some business tips, and then we'll close the show out after a short break uh, with my Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week. A couple of things I came across this past week. Uh, in the business world, I want to pass them on to you. The first is employees trying to steal your business. Uh, this is something that perhaps as a small business person you don't think about often, but uh, in the world of business uh, today, and it's a reality, probably one that most of you don't like, is we have a turnover issue. We have employees that jump from job to job, move around. Uh, some of them are fairly good at what they do. A lot of them aren't. Uh, but this churn or turnover, we've got to be careful and because every time an employee leaves your business, depending on what kind of business you have, they can take part of your business with them. Now, this is not necessarily the old situation where, you know, the salesman knew the customers. And when good old Bob left and went to work somewhere else, he took those customers with him because he had that relationship. I'm talking about people that learn how your business work, works. They, they learn what you do well. They learn how you do things differently. Uh, things that you've developed over a period of, of years, processes, uh, the way you sell in your retail operation, how you're able to dress your window even if you're a, a merchant on Main Street. And they take these things to other businesses. And one way to, to stop this is to have new hires sign a simple non-compete agreement. This doesn't prevent them from getting a job in your industry, but it prevents them from using the things they learned in your business in their new job. So it's important that you you uh, be aware of this and consider signing a simple non-compete agreement with every employment employee you hire. Excuse me. Second business tip I'd like to talk about is uh, something I came across. Again, something that's a little bit unusual, uh, but we had on our guest uh, someone from this organization, and that's the first responders peer support, uh, providing hope for our heroes. There's an emergency chaplain group that we have talked with on the show, and what I'm trying to get out to you in this business tip, if you or people in your business are suffering uh, from PTSD or some kind of situation to develop because of their service, uh, it, perhaps at a time of war, and it could be at any time of war, or it could be that they serve as even as a voluntary fireman uh, or work in a sheriff's reserve or anything. 
there are groups out there available to anybody that meet on a weekly basis, a very non-threatening, readily available. There are groups throughout our areas that meet at Spring Baptist Church, Crosby Church in Crosby, and the Tomball Regional Medical Center just down the road. So what I'm trying to say is help is available out there, and I wanted to put this in the business tips this week. So it's important that you, if you know somebody, please help them find one of these groups so they can get some help. This is a very non-threatening way uh, for people to connect with other people uh, so that they can help recover from the pressure they might feel from involvement, like I say, in service to our neighborhoods, our communities, and to our country as a whole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a real short break right now and hear from some of our nonprofits. And when I come back, I'm going to give you the Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week, the four disciplines of business execution. Thank you. Hi, folks. It's your old buddy, Luke Clayton, and I want to invite you to join me every Saturday morning right here on Lone Star Internet Radio from 8 to 9 or Outdoors with Luke Clayton and Friends. Bill Dance is a frequent guest. Larry Weissman, Mr. Whitetail, is on the show every week. We talk a lot of hunting and fishing and generally have a good time. So remember, every Saturday morning, 8 to 9, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. I'm Lieutenant Bob Berry with the Conroe Police Department, reminding you that drinking and driving do not mix. Drinking and driving causes an alcohol-related fatality every hour in the United States. Stay sober and stay alive. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor. Appreciate you listening to today's show. And I want to end the show today with the Silver Fox Advisor's Tip of the week. Uh, This went a little bit longer perhaps than others, but to me this was a very important topic, an issue that I stumbled across, I guess I know about, but I came across a great article uh, in Forbes magazine that was put out on eBlast back on October 30th of this year, and I wanted to share it with you and also encourage you to perhaps take some notes. Uh, It's very simple, but it can make a huge difference in your business. And the four disciplines of business execution Business execution, what we do every day, how we execute our plan, how we execute our business. Uh, This is where a lot of failure occurs, even in small ways. Uh, Yes, it could be the failure of the business, but when a business fails because it doesn't execute, typically that happens a little bit every day. It's like the old adage, a thousand cuts. Well, every day, if we're not executing our business, if, we're, if we have employees and they're not executing, it begins to add up and our business slowly but surely begins to fall back from the competition. Now, there's no doubt it can reach a level perhaps and settle in and it is what it is. But if you're truly dedicated to having your business grow and advance, as my clients are, then I think it's important that we be aware of the things we need to do. The first one is focus. We need to focus on what matters in our business. We need to have a clear vision in our own heads as the owners and managers of business of what we need to focus on. And then most importantly, we need to focus on that every day. We need to have the discipline to focus on it. It's kind of like practicing the violin. We have to do those scales every day and we have to stay on focused on what is really, really important in our business. The second thing is leverage, the discipline of leverage. You know, when we have unlimited time or resources, which very few, if any of us have, uh, we can do anything. But many times in our small businesses, and particularly in the startup phase of our business, we're really challenged because we're challenged to accomplish, excuse me, accomplish more with less. And we must learn to leverage what we have. In other words, if we only have a little, what can we do with it? We've got to leverage that and we have to do that every day. The third discipline is that of engagement. Engagement, now what does that mean? Well, it means you want to have performance that only passion and engagement can produce. You have to change from being, if you in fact are, an authority-driven leader looking for authority-driven compliance. And we've seen this throughout history. Been a lot written about it, particularly about world leaders that authoritative type people, they drove their business, they drove their country, 
based on their authority through fear and, and techniques like that. This is not what will drive a business's success. You have to be a passion-driven commitment in yourself and then in the people that you're leading. We heard Bobby Cobb talk about this in our first segment of the show a lot, is that the passion she has, and you could sense it while she was in the studio today. You have to have that passion, and you have to look for people that will buy into that passion and accept it. Authority just won't cut it. I'm not saying you can't have a business that survives, but you won't have a business that thrives. And the fourth and last and most important discipline is the discipline of accountability. What's accountability? It means that there's consistent action and follow through on the part of you as the manager, owner, and leader of that business. But you have to be driven to accountability and you're facing a whirlwind of competing priorities. Every day, new things coming, but you can't lose track of that accountability. But what's important is the fact is discipline four is the most crucial, but the idea is that only if you have one through three, focus, leverage, and engagement set up properly do you have a chance to really win the game and build a truly successful business. So I'm going to take a second here, and I came up with a couple of examples uh, that uh, out of this article, they mentioned a couple of things, and I built some examples. And so it's uh, things that I guess the first one that people don't do right. You know, so many entrepreneurs focus on an idea, but they don't execute on it, which is what I'm really talking about today. And there are two fundamental reasons that execution is so difficult for so many of us. The first is that it requires people to change their behavior. If you want to achieve your goals that you've never achieved before, and you heard Bobby Cox, she had worked for other people, financial industry, oil and gas business. Now she was in business for herself. So she's looking to achieve things she's never achieved before. Then you have to change your behavior in order to change to be successful. And it's even harder because of the second challenge, and that's implementing these changes in an environment that's already swirling with ur urgent priorities. So you've got to prioritize your time. You've got to narrow your focus. You know, you have to say no to new ideas. I worked with a client one time, and every time we met on a weekly basis, he had a new idea about something to do in his business, a different direction to take it. You can't do that. You've got to pick a focus, pick your ideas. Can't mean you can't tweak things, that you can't add things on, but you really got to stay focused on that basic business to make it work. You've got to lead outcomes and behaviors, not just overall results, because the behaviors and the outcomes are what lead to the results. You have to create that cadence, as it was said in the article, of shared accountability, because reality is people are more accountable to their team members. If you don't believe that, look at the United States Marines, the Army, and the other branches of service. We hear it all the time. I wanted to be there to be with my buddies, to share the experience and take care of them. This is what it's about. You've got to make people feel like they're accountable to the people that they work with. I hope you've enjoyed that tip. Uh, I think those four disciplines in and of themselves are one of the simple things that anyone either starting a business or already in business can do something with, and you can start today. Again, focus, leverage, engagement, and accountability. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us today, and I encourage you to visit our website at IRLoneStar.com to stay up on everything happening in Montgomery County. And as we close the show today, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to our sponsors, Patricia Cooper Insurance Company, Schooley Mitchell with Jerry Polio, Taylorized PR, and the Silver Fox Advisors. And also to Bobby Cox, excuse me, Bobby Cobb for sharing her experience and expertise. Stay engaged this week and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Next week, our special studio guest will be Matt Umbles. Thank you for joining us. And until next week, remember to stay in touch with what is happening here in Montgomery County, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of the Weekly Business Hour, brought to you by the Silver Fox Advisors, the number one mentoring and business advising group in the greater Houston area. If you have a question or a comment, 
please contact me on my Facebook page or by email, rick at irlonestar.com.